G'day there guys, it's Connie here again from Marky Industries and we are back with some more stories from Reddit. As always, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and also the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Alrighty, let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, kicking things off on Am I the A-Hole, this one was written by user Empty Chemist, and it's titled Am I the A-Hole for telling my sister I don't know if I love her after finding out about her five-year affair? My sister, 32, moved in with me because she got pregnant five months ago from what she claimed was a one-night stand. I loved my sister, so of course I took her in. My husband is overseas for six more months, so it was nice to have her around because I care about her very much. On Monday, I came home and saw my sister and a strange woman in a screaming match on my doorstep. I obviously didn't know what was happening, but I saw the woman poking my pregnant sister's shoulder, so I intervened. I sent my sister inside and she begged me to send the other woman away. I didn't understand what was going on, but I wanted the altercation to end for everyone's sake, so I told the woman as much. Then she started screaming, asking me if I was also sleeping with her husband. I was like, question marks? And then she basically revealed that my sister had been having an affair with her husband for five years. Five years. She had everything printed out. Chats, photos, emails, receipts. It was disturbing to see, and I didn't want to go through it all. But a few things were established. One, my sister knew about his wife. She knew she was the mistress and liked it. Two, this woman was a stay-at-home mum to their four kids, one of whom has a severe disability from a car accident. Three, her husband knew about my sister's pregnancy and even took her on a baby moon to celebrate it. Four, the affair had been going on the entire time, with my sister believing he would eventually leave his wife for her. And five, my sister had fully embraced the role of being the other woman and was emotionally invested in their relationship, despite his repeated lies about leaving his wife. I told the woman I was very sorry and that I obviously didn't know, but I asked her to leave because this wasn't going anywhere and I didn't want the neighbours to call the police. She was furious but gave me her number on a post-it begging me not to let her husband stay at my house. I assured her that no man was stepping foot in my home. My sister was begging me not to believe the woman, calling her a vindictive ex-wife. I told her, Alright then, let's look up the marriage online. Let's see if a motion for dissolution of marriage was ever submitted. We fought hard. My sister kept saying I would never understand and that they loved each other, but he just couldn't leave his wife, blah blah blah. I called her dumb and naive. The next day, I told her that she could stay here because I didn't want her to become a financial burden on that woman in any way, but I also told her that right now, I didn't want to engage with her. My sister asked me if I still loved her, and I told her honestly, quote, Right now, I can't say I do. I will always help my nephew and not endanger you, but I can't like you because you've shown me you're not a trustworthy person. End quote. I told her I did not trust her not to try anything with my husband, and I didn't trust her with anything at all, so I made her sign a tenant's agreement. She's been begging me to forgive her, and I told her there's nothing to forgive. I just don't know who she is anymore. Am I the a-hole? Well, oh, that's full on. I mean, it's hard to judge OP for her, you know, feelings if you haven't been in that situation yourself, and I certainly haven't been. Let's go to the comments. Not the a-hole. You need to make sure she is out of your home before your husband comes home, because you are right, you cannot trust her. Opie replies, I wouldn't worry, I trust my husband 100%. Not my sister anymore though. I already told him and asked if she ever did something and he said no. Another comment says, Not the a-hole, your sister's behaviour was vile and inexcusable. That poor woman and her children, her husband is an absolute POS. Opie says, I said the affair started five years ago, right? Now guess where she, the wife, and the kid got into an accident that left the kid disabled. A commenter said, And your sister knew? She's a despicable person, and I'm amazed how strong your wife is still keeping her housed with you, not the a-hole. Opie says, She met the effing kids, took them to the zoo with the idiot. Wow, that is severely ballsy. She wanted them to get to know her so she could hop right into the mum role as soon as he divorced his wife. Yeah, right. Opie's parents... They died seven years ago. One comment says, You should ask for pics so you know what this guy looks like and arrange to get outdoor cameras at least so your sister isn't sneaking him around when you're at work. 
It should be grounds for eviction if she does allow him around. Opie says, I saw him in the pictures his wife showed me. Also, I work from home at the moment, so no dice. Why Opie lets her live with Opie? One of my reasons is that I don't want her to get an apartment on his dime when that money should go to his kids. Also, my nephew doesn't deserve to be born homeless. She pays me no rent, so if he gives her spending money, there's nothing that I can do. But living on his dime in an apartment he would pay for and possibly put in his name, dangerous. Just curious, what does your husband say about this situation? He said that it's very disappointing she turned out to be like that and said that it's difficult to trust her as she proved to be such a good liar. He is the one who helped me with the tenancy agreement and all that. The unvoted comment says, Yeah, that whole thing might just be so that she has tenant rights so that she can try to ruin your effing life. Opie says, Listen, you don't know which country I'm from. We got legal help and did this together with someone that actually has a clue. We saved our asses like this. If not, that would be akin to squatter's rights in the US. Opie, what are you going to do once the baby is here? Assuming the dad wants to be in the kid's life at least, somewhat, I think it's unreasonable to ban him from the house. Opie says, If she wants him there, she can get her very own apartment. If she still wants to stay and save up for the baby, she has to adhere to my house rules. She's free to go and see him outside. I put up my rules. If she wants to stay, she has to adhere to them. She has been told. She still has four months to make that decision. If she wants him physically with her after birth, she can do that, but not in my house. And how the wife got Opie's address, she got the address from his phone. Okay guys, straight to an update, five days later. First, I'd like to clarify a few things. I'm not going to tell my sister to get rid of the baby. That's not my place, and I would never suggest such a thing. Also, I'm not going to install tracking software on her phone or demand access to all her devices. That's invasive and wrong. I've been thinking a lot, and while I can't say that I don't love my sister, it's very hard to feel that love right now. I don't know who she is anymore. It's not just that she lied to me, it's what she did and how convinced she is that she was justified because they were in love. She's brought chaos into my home that I opened up to her. I'm deeply disappointed in her, and I just don't like her at the moment. I'm letting her stay with me because I don't want her to become dependent on him. I don't think he's a good man either, and as a social worker, I've seen these scenarios too many times. My sister is already deluded. I don't need to open the door to a dependency that's also financial. Now on to the update. I haven't been punishing my sister, but I've been treating her like a roommate. This is driving her crazy. She's begging me to go back to how things were before, but I can't. I told her that I need time, and that things can't just return to normal overnight. She tried to explain how it all happened. She admitted that she always knew he was married, but believed she could tell how unhappy he was and felt he deserved to be happy. They met at a bar a few weeks after his son's accident. He told her that his wife hadn't touched him since it happened, and that he was about to explode. I asked her why she would involve herself with a married man, knowing the hurt it would cause. She said she wanted to be a wife and a good mum, and that included his kids. She had hoped he would divorce his wife so they could all move on and finally be happy together. I just stared at her, unable to comprehend how she could rationalise her actions. A few days later, he appeared at our house, claiming he had left his wife and wanted to be with my sister. I told him to leave immediately or I would call the police. My sister was furious with me, accusing me of ruining her chance at happiness. I made it clear to her, if he comes over again, I will evict her. She's free to date anyone she wants, but not under my roof. I also told her that if she plans to have him around after the baby is born, she'll need to find her own place. Word has gotten around our community about the affair. While we were grocery shopping, a woman even spat on my sister. Many of her friends have cut ties with her, calling her a homewrecker. Some are married themselves and don't want her near their husbands. I haven't said I told you so even once. We unexpectedly ran into his wife at a local cafe. My sister wanted to apologise and suggested that maybe they could all have a good relationship for the sake of the kids. The wife laughed coldly and said, You made your choices, now live with them. Don't expect me to make this easier for you. My sister is devastated and has been lying in bed ever since. I'm taking care of her physical needs, making sure she eats, stays hydrated and attends her prenatal appointments. 
but I can't bring myself to comfort her emotionally. I just don't have it in me right now. One comment says, Is your sister mentally sound? She seems to be living in a fantasy world, not the a-hole. Opie says, I don't think she's having a psychotic break. I think she's in too far, and now that she's destroyed her life, she's trying to make it work. One comment says, To get in this far, she can't be a good person, and neither can he. They're both so insanely selfish that they put getting laid over destroying his kid's family and home. I feel horribly for that child. Its parents are trash. Opie says, That's also been my thoughts. I asked the last time and wasn't answered, how did your sister make it to like 32 and wasn't living with you? Was she working? Why did she immediately stop working the second she found out she was pregnant? If she didn't, why did she give up her apartment and move in with you? A 32-year-old living alone had some way to support herself and people don't just quit their jobs overnight because they got pregnant, unless it's because they're in a stable relationship and the partner was willing to support them, in which case, again, moving in with you would not be necessary. You talk about not being financially dependent on him, but now she's financially dependent on you. Why would you agree to allow her to become financially dependent on you, and why would you accept the cost of caring for an adult and her child just because it's your sister? If she's not working, she should absolutely not have the kid, and you should absolutely not be bearing the brunt of her bad decisions. Opie says, I had quite a few, so I don't believe I read yours, or at least not fully. I answered someone who asked something similar. Yes, she has a job. She moved in with me to save up for her baby. She's on maternity leave. Her job is not super high paying. I'm not responding to the rest of the comment as it seems more aggressive than helpful. Opie responds to a downvoted commenter saying that's not how maternity leave works in the US. Good thing we're not in the US, neither the UK. Yeah, you get 100% of the pay for 6 months after that 80% or something like that for 6 more months and I think 50% if you go over a year. Also notice how I said not super high paying. I was spit on multiple times growing up because I was an idiot. I received a lot of hate because my birther was an unwed teen mum. Random people, teachers, churchgoers, good chunk of so-called family, small towns suck more than I can say. Opie says they go pretty hard in the name of Jesus. Hypocrites if you ask me. When asked where Opie lives, she says I won't say but we are quite religious here. Old women think they are the law and all of that. Holy crap, someone spit on her? What are you people, Amish? Catholic. Quote, he appeared at our house claiming he'd left his wife and wanted to be with my sister. (laughs) Haha, sure, he left his wife after five years, coincidentally at the moment she discovered everything. I'm completely sure it's not the wife who dumped him. Opie says, I think the same thing. Your sister really is a piece of work. What did she expect would happen once news of the affair got out? If it weren't for the fact that she's pregnant, I wouldn't have put it past someone to do more than spit at her. The child is going to grow up hated by the affair partners, soon to be ex and to their children. Opie says, I think worse is coming to her. I know our town. That's why she mostly stays in right now. Someone alleges Opie is only blaming the sister and not the affair partner. Opie responds, I blame him. He is a horrible man with no morals. He couldn't even wait for his son to be out of the hospital to start an affair because his ballpark wasn't getting scratched by his wife, who was also in the accident. I hate him. I hate him so badly that I resent that he exists. But he is not in my life. I didn't know him. He has no cards in my game. I'm so mad at my sister for not only effing up her life, but also bringing chaos into mine after I opened my home to her. I'm mad she lied to me for five years. But most of all, I am disgusted with her horrible selfish actions. She wasn't lured into this. She knew from the beginning that she was a mistress. She knew what she was doing. She knew it was wrong. And yet she kept doing it and lying through her teeth. I don't know who she is. And now for a new final update, almost one month later. My sister just won't stop talking about him. Every day it's the same story. Their perfect future together the apartment they're moving into, how everything will be great once his divorce is done. She's completely lost in this delusion, acting like none of the lies and betrayal matter. I can't stand it. She made him write me letters, yes, actual letters, as if that's going to magically make me approve of him. She leaves them around the house, thinking that if I just read them, I'll suddenly understand how sorry he is, and how much he loves her. I haven't responded to a single one. It's ridiculous. 
I told her over and over that I don't want anything to do with him, but she keeps pushing, as if she can wear me down. It's beyond frustrating. Then came the talk of moving in together. She sat me down and asked for my blessing, telling me how important it was to her that I support their relationship. She actually wanted me to meet him, to give him a chance. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That's when I drew the line. I told her flat out, if she moves in with him, I'm done. I told her I would go low contact, that I wouldn't be part of their life, and that she's on her own if she goes through with this. If she wanted my support, she had to leave him. Full stop. For a moment, I thought she was finally getting it. She showed me screenshots from his ex-wife. The ex had pretended she wanted him back, and this guy fell for it immediately. He told her how much he missed her, how my sister was a mistake, how he wanted to fix things with his family. My sister was crushed. She came to me with the screenshots crying, and I thought for a couple days that maybe, just maybe, she would finally see him for who he really is. I was hopeful. But then, as usual, he wormed his way back in. He told her he only said those things because he was afraid his ex would take the kids away. And of course, she bought it. Now she's actively moving in with him, packing up her things and making all these plans like nothing happened. The screenshots? Forgotten. The lies? Excused. She's determined to be with him no matter what. And I am done. I told her I'm not helping her anymore. No more driving her to appointments. No more checking on her. Nothing. I'm not going to pretend everything's okay while she's diving headfirst into this disaster. Now I barely talk to her. If she asks where the tea is, I'll tell her. If she wants to know if there's milk left, I'll answer, but that's it. I'm emotionally cut off, and I told her straight. I'll be here if things fall apart, if she's in danger, but I'm not going to be a part of this train wreck. She's on her own now. The community backlash hasn't slowed down either. Everywhere we go, people are whispering, staring, and judging. They're not just looking at her, they're looking at me too. People know she's living with me, and I've started hearing comments at work about why I haven't completely cut her off. It's affecting my life now, and I just can't carry her mistakes anymore. Her friends? All gone. The ones who were married have cut ties completely. She's isolated herself, but instead of waking up, she's clinging harder to him, holding on to this fantasy that everything will work out. But I'm done caring. She's made her choice and now she has to live with the fallout. This is the final update, because I'm finished. I'm done trying, done caring, done dealing with the mess she's made. She can have her life with him, but I'm not going to be a part of it. Wow, Opie answers some final comments. Not the a-hole. Let her be. Kick her out sooner. This started to affect your life more than her. Opie says she's leaving by the 23rd at the latest. Contract's been terminated. She is out by the 23rd. She'll lose him as she got him. You'll hear from her in the future when he cheats on her. Opie says, I give it three months. I don't blame you for being over this whole mess. As my mum would say, I won't be crapping out what you eat, meaning the consequences of your sister's actions are for her and her alone to deal with. You've been a good sister and done all you can to make her see the error of her ways. Now you just have to let the chips fall where they may. I'm nosy. Can you come back and tell us her sob story when she comes crawling back? Opie replies, I like that idiom. I don't know, maybe if I need to vent, but I hope that this is the last of my involvement. Another comment says, yeah, last update I predicted things wouldn't change and she would just start affecting you too, and now even indirectly she's affecting you socially. So I know she's not going to leave without you kicking her out. Hopefully you see that sooner than later. Good luck. I think she's thrilled about leaving to finally be with him, lol. I knew a woman like Opie's sister. That man never left his wife. He never got a place with the woman I knew. She's alone. He's still with his wife. Opie says, I don't think his wife is taking him back. Not the a-hole. Your sister is reaching rock bottom. It's now up to her to get out or go further down. It's pathetic she can't face reality. Maybe because she intentionally lost everything and everyone because of her selfish choices. For your sake, it's best to maintain low to no contact. Opie says, It's sad for my nephew, but he has two parents now. I'm concentrated on my life now. Wow, so who's he going to sleep with the second she's out of commission due to childbirth? We know he won't be sticking around the hospital or staying alone while she's there. Yeah, exactly, and the cycle repeats itself. Anyway guys, we're going to leave that story there. I'm getting exhausted just reading it. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below.
Otherwise, we're moving on. Alrighty, we're on the same subreddit. This one was written by user Efficient Access, and it's titled Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend he shouldn't take his girl best friend for couple's costume for Halloween? I don't know, I think I may be wrong. My boyfriend, 26, and I, 23, have been together for 8 months. He is very kind to me and has never raised his voice or lost his temper with me. I was introduced to his friends very early on in our relationship, and I get along with them just fine. He and his friends have been friends from nursery days, and they're all very nice to me. He has a friend, Vivian, fake name, who along with his two other friends, plan for Halloween every year, months in advance. I've never doubted any foul play about them, and I've never wanted to be the jealous new girlfriend who ruins friendships. The problem is that my boyfriend works in a firm where they apparently throw Halloween parties. He goes with one of his friends every year, and this year was Vivian's turn to go with him, because last year he went with his friend Tom. Plus, he and Viv have a thing about scary costumes and horror, and they share the same love for Halloween. The thing is, I love Halloween too. My boyfriend knows that, and we share the common interests too. Granted, I can't just claim a common interest, but he didn't even ask me once if I wanted to go with him, since he and Viv started planning two months ago. We were dating then, and he never mentioned it to me. It's just that I thought he could have at least asked me. He mentioned to me two days ago that he and Viv had their couple's Halloween costumes ready, and if I wanted to see them. I did not feel as positive about it as I should have, and I guess it showed on my face because he asked what was wrong, and I asked him why he never even asked me to go with him once. He didn't get mad, but said that he won't change his rituals with his friends for his relationship, He told me I knew about it early on, as he told me before. I felt hurt, and I told him that's a hurtful thing to say, and he didn't respond. He's been giving me the silent treatment. I've never expected him to dump plans with his friends for me, ever. I don't mind when he does escape rooms with Viv or always has hiking plans with Tom and the others. The only reason I thought he could have asked me is because I love Halloween too, and thought it was a common interest. But now I feel I've stepped over the line, and I feel really awful. Am I the a-hole? Let's go straight to the comments. Not the a-hole. Hold up, did he really tell you word for word that his couple's costume was ready and asked if you wanted to see them? Is he having a laugh? He won't change his rituals with his friends for his relationship. Not even having a whole couple's costume with someone else? That's crazy. Part of being in a relationship is fitting your partner in with your friends, the things you normally do. I just think if it was really that into you, and Viv was really such a good friend, you'd be the plus one this time and she'd understand, because you are his girlfriend. Of course, you're right to feel left out. If he can't see this from your perspective, I don't think he's cut out to be your boyfriend. If he honestly can't see what's wrong here, dump him. He's never raised his voice or yelled at me, so the bare minimum? You're keeping around a man who is blatantly disrespectful for the bare minimum? Why are you feeling bad? Your supposed boyfriend is acting like he's single rather than part of a couple. Not shouting or hitting you does not make him a good boyfriend. Listening to your thoughts and feelings would make him a good boyfriend, but he does none of those things. From what you have posted, I do not think he's into you very much. Are you sure you're his girlfriend? Because he does not treat you as one. Not the a-hole. Seems like everyone here is on the side of the OP. I think it depends on whether these plans were made before or after meeting you, which I think everyone is missing the point. If a person makes an agreement with someone, they should keep that agreement, and the one that came after should respect it. I would also tell him that things will change for next year, so don't make any plans without you. OP says, He made those plans two months ago. We were together then. Yeah, and that commenter got downvoted into oblivion because they obviously just didn't read the first post properly. Don't be that guy. Let's go to an update. He apologised and we broke up. I didn't want to, certainly not because he could have asked me to Halloween, but his response was, he realised he was not someone who could give me the attention and care I deserved, and Vivian deserved better. I asked him if there was something between him and Viv, and get this, he is in love with her, Some people who DM'd me were right. Apparently Vivian doesn't know. And while I was crying and felt like I was going to have a panic attack, he was explaining their long history and how he was too much of a coward to tell her. Well, I guess that makes two of us because I was too much of a coward to ask if he even actually liked me. I'm a wreck. I took sick leave this week and luckily my professors were understanding. I feel like it's my fault. 
I didn't even want him to not go with Viv. All I did was ask why did he not think of taking me once, now that we're dating for almost a year. I know it wasn't my fault and it was for the best, but I'm constantly blaming myself for opening my mouth. My friends are telling me to go to a therapist, but with my grad school work and the mess of a person I am, I don't know what I'll do. I want to yell at him for wasting my time and hurting my feelings, even though he cried and apologised and kept on saying I deserved better. I know I do. I feel like Vivian won, even though she doesn't know, and I have no right to be angry at her because it's all my ex. I don't think I'll update after this. Maybe if something big happens. Yeah, I wouldn't lose too many sleep over it if I was OP. She's still really young, got a whole life ahead of her, and this guy clearly doesn't deserve her anyway. I mean, how hard is it to just not date people when you're in love with someone else? Like, just don't do that. He's hoping the ex asks Vivian out or something and she rejects him into the sun. That'd be great. Anyway, what do you guys reckon? Let me know that in the comments. Alright, we're going to move on again. Okay, over on relationship advice, this one was written by user pleb101 and it's titled My family sold my rock collection when I went to college. What am I supposed to do? I'm a college freshman and I'm currently visiting my mum over break. When I got there, I saw a crystal that was in my old room on display and asked about it. My mum then told me that the rest was gone after the yard sale. For context, my parents were moving the same time I was getting ready for college, so the house was in chaos basically. I had a rock collection that had been growing for around 10 years and it cost me over a thousand dollars. Some were gifts from old friends or family, some I'd found in special destinations of significance and all of them were important to me. Since the collection took up two cabinets, I knew I couldn't take it to my dorm room and decided to pack them up. My brother also likes rocks, so I thought he would be a good fit to look after them while I couldn't, or at least until I decorated my room when my parents bought a house. Apparently my brother picked through the boxes and told my mother to sell everything he didn't want to keep. My aunt and mother took a few each that they liked, but hundreds of rocks were either donated or sold, with none of the profit going to me, and without my knowledge. When I learned this, I broke down into tears. I know they're just rocks, but they brought me a lot of happiness, and I can't believe they're just gone. Writing this out is making me cry again. My mother feels really sorry, and I don't blame anyone for this, but I'm crushed. How do I deal with this loss and not take it out on my family? I'm not mad at anyone, I just wish I'd explained better or something, and I don't want my family to think I'm angry with them. I mean, personally, I'd be pretty angry. They sold your stuff without even telling you about it. How are you not mad about that? Let's go to the comments. You don't blame anyone for this? I sure would. Your brother for telling your mother to sell them, your mother for selling them without even discussing it with you first. Quote, How do I deal with this loss and not taken out of my family? I'm not mad at anyone, I just wish I'd explained better or something, and I don't want my family to think I'm angry with them. Why aren't you angry with them? This is horrible, rude, awful behaviour from them. Why do you think it's your fault that they acted like this? I hope at least your mother and aunt and brother have given you back the parts of your collection that they decided to keep, and given you some of the money they got for selling the rest. Unhinged behaviour. Opie replies. Honestly, I do have some anger, but I don't want to direct it at them. They're not bad people at all, but so far my mum, the only one I've talked to, has been trying to act like everything is normal again, and it honestly makes me feel worse. They've never done anything like this before. I'm just angry at the whole situation. They stole from you and then sold the stolen goods. Have they given you the proceeds of the sale? I'd say your opinion of them as not bad people is wildly incorrect. Only bad people steal from their child. Opie replies, My parents thought I was giving them away, so they weren't trying to steal from me. It doesn't really change how hurt I am, but it makes me feel bad to have them for it. I'm starting to feel like I'm underreacting, but I'm really conflicted since they provide for me and everything, which I know doesn't justify anything, but still. It's okay to be mad and sad. Have you had a conversation with your brother to let him know that you meant for him to look after them and enjoy them, not that they were his to give away? Let him know you're sorry you weren't more clear that that was the case, but that you're upset about it and it's going to take some time for you to get over. Your parents too. Quote, I know that in the scheme of things it's rocks, I had a lot of memories in my collection, and I'm just going to be a little sad and a little mad that they're gone. I know it's not anyone's fault and I'm not blaming anyone, 
I just have a lot of feelings about not having them anymore, and it's going to be a bit before I'm okay with it. When it's not so raw, maybe see if your family would be willing to go with you to get a few new rocks that are tied to new memories, or let friends know you're rebuilding your collection, slowly so you can keep them with you. Opie replies, Thank you for your reply and for understanding. They really aren't evil people, and you're correct that it's a misunderstanding. Some parts my fault, some parts theirs. I'm going to use your response when I talk to them. I struggle with the confrontation, so if I don't have a plan, I probably won't be clear. You should blame them. That they have phones and FaceTime, nobody called you to ask you anything. Your family is incredibly inconsiderate, and I'm sorry your collection was destroyed. Opie says, this is honestly the part that hurts the most to me. It would have taken like two minutes to call me, and my parents have taken me to go buy rocks countless times, so I don't understand why they didn't think to second check. Opie edits the same day. My family didn't mean to steal, they just assumed I was giving them away. It wasn't necessarily malicious, but it was definitely wrong. Also, I think the reason I'm struggling to be mad is because me and my mum have a really good relationship. She's the person I can always rely on, and I'm really hoping the situation is the misunderstanding I see it as. Thank you for all your replies. I haven't had anyone to talk to about it all day, since my friends are all busy and the only other people around are my family. Edit 2. My parents are well off, so I don't think they sold them for the money. Any money made was probably put into household funds, and I doubt they made a thousand dollars off the items. That's just how much I've estimated I've spent. I would feel very guilty to ask them for that much, especially since they're paying for my college, so I'm thinking about maybe asking them to buy something of equivalent value. I've never had to bargain with my parents, so I'm not sure how this will go down. I'm going to talk to them tonight, since my dad is here now. I'm going to take the advice of writing something out to read them. All the people saying I'm a pushover are 100% correct, lol, but I'm going to try not to be when I talk to them. Now for an update the next day. This is probably going to be my final edit. I just talked with my parents and I used kind of a long speech that included some specific memories I'd connected to the rocks and asked to be compensated financially for the loss. I was crying the whole time, so I'm not sure how much of it they understood. Surprisingly, they're completely willing to pay me back for it and my parents were both completely sorry and admitted it was their fault. They told me that they were surprised that I didn't want the rocks, but that at the same time I was giving away other sentimental things like stuffed animals that they thought that I would have kept. Because of this, they didn't think to call me to confirm, since the times they had with other things I had agreed. They said they're going to get everything back from my aunt and brother. My mum has already rounded up what she took, and they want to take me rock shopping the rest of the weekend I have together with them. This has been such a chaotic day for me, and I never expected so many people to reach out. For those suggesting it, I am looking into therapy. I think that my issues with confrontation and social pressure in general warrant some professional help. My dad actually notes that he was proud of me for bringing it up to them the way I did. I'm going to be a combination of mad and sad for a while, but now it isn't all stuck inside of me. Thank you to everyone for pushing me to talk to them up front. I probably wouldn't have done it without their help. Oh, it's good to hear that the parents are willing to pay her back, in some way at least. Let's go to some final comments. The large collection of 80 to 250 year old coins, with a focus on countries that no longer existed, such as Joseon, Zanzibar, Vichy, France, Prussia, and the HRE, I had inherited from a childless World War I veteran, got sold for $200 during my first semester away from home. It was worth several thousand dollars in the 1990s and would be six figures now, but dear old dad needed beer money. It's not the worst thing my biological dad ever did to me by a country mile, but I'm still salty. The number of my mum put my priceless baseball cards in a church rummage sale stories that have circulated for at least the past 50 years should be enough to make people think twice, shouldn't they? In case they're not though, don't get rid of your kids' collections under any circumstances. My mum threw away my Christmas village after my grandma died. Her and I every year got a new Christmas home to add to the village. It was thousands of dollars, but it was a large piece of my childhood and sentimental to me because of my super close relationship to my grandma. She was basically my mum. I'm still crushed and she passed in 2018. I miss her a lot. It's actually nice to read a conclusion that wasn't full of Davo and cruelty from the parents, but just compassion, accountability and demands. Good place to end for the night.
Here, here, except I'm not ending yet. We're going to go to another story. Alright, over on Draw Off My Chest now. This one was written by user Traditional Tale, and it's titled I'm leaving my boyfriend after he drunkenly confessed something to me last night. My boyfriend and I, both 29, have been together for two years now. Before that, we were both married and got cheated on by our spouses. We were introduced to each other through mutual friends and thought we would get along since we went through the same thing. I've told everyone us meeting that night was the greatest blessing because he came into my life at a very dark point in my life. In the past two years, we moved to a new town, started new jobs, and bought a house. I travel for work and he works 90 hours a week, so we both have no desire to have kids. I have a brother, 31, who has been with a woman since 2020. They were supposed to get married, but called it off in 2022. Since then, they've been on and off together, and really don't have a great relationship. That was until November, when his girlfriend found out she was pregnant, and they decided to get serious. They bought a house, and have been going to couples therapy. Their relationship seems to be working out now, since they had their baby. They decided to host a 4th of July party at their house. I attended with my boyfriend. I spent most of the night helping with cooking and helping my brother's girlfriend set up and watching my niece. Like every 4th of July party, there's people getting way too drunk and starting to act up. Once mostly everyone had left, my boyfriend and me, brother and his girlfriend, and a couple friends were sitting by the fire and having a few drinks. My boyfriend had a few too many drinks and was starting to act drunk. He started telling random stories, and after a few random stories, he says, brother's girlfriend's name, remember when we used to hook up last year? My brother's girlfriend looks at him in shock and then starts apologising to me. I just sat there in silence before leaving. Immediately after, I got texts from his girlfriend, my boyfriend and brother, all trying to fix things and saying he didn't mean to tell me. His girlfriend texts me the story and says that they hooked up for a couple of months while I was working in another state and she was broken up with my brother. I haven't replied to anyone's texts, just spent the morning packing all my stuff from the house and leaving with my car and the truck I bought for him. I already feel so much happier knowing what he did to me and now that he's gone. Wow, imagine that, after all they've gone through. Let's go to the comments. I'm sorry, that's so effed. Especially that even your brother didn't tell you. Have you talked to anyone since? I would be going no contact with my brother. We would have nothing to speak about going forward. Just knowing my boyfriend cheated on me with your girlfriend and everyone smiling in my face afterwards while I'm the only one he doesn't know, I just couldn't come back from it. He cheated on you with your brother's girlfriend and they all knew and no one said anything. WTF. Why is your brother still with her and why didn't he tell you? And did your boyfriend apologise for cheating or just apologise for telling you because it seems like he's only sorry for letting it slip? F them all. I would cut contact with all of them. Are you sure the baby is your brother's? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, now for an update three months later. Well, looking at my original post, I never expected it to blow up like it did. I honestly forgot I made this post until my own story came up on my TikTok, lol. So here's my update. It took me a bit, but I have gone 100% no contact with my entire family and haven't heard from my ex-boyfriend since July. I sold our house, left my job, sold his truck, and bought a house in my favourite town closer to my best friends. It was a much needed step to heal and move on with life. I found a great job there and grew closer to all of my friends, especially my college best friend, Trey. I found myself venting to him all the time, and him always being there if I needed someone. He's been my rock since the move, and I'm so extremely grateful for him. I finally made the move I think we've both been scared to make, and we're telling our friends tomorrow that we're officially dating. We're going on our first triple date as a friend group tomorrow too. My life is so beautiful now that all the toxic people are gone, and I'm in my happy place. Consider this my post reminding you that it's okay to start over. I bet you'll bloom all over again, and your life will be ten times better. Now for some final comments. Congrats, any idea what the other people are up to? Opie says, nope, I don't keep up with them anymore and have everyone blocked. I was just thinking about you yesterday. I'm so happy to hear you cut those people out of your life, and you're doing so well. I was expecting the admission to be that Opie's boyfriend was the baby daddy. I would love to hear from Opie's brother what the hell he was gaining with his stance on that mess. 
Mind you, if she went to no contact with all of her family, I guess they all just suck. Yeah, it sounds like it. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below. Anyway guys, that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.